Joining us now, former Deputy, Deputy Independent Counsel and former Assistant U.S. Attorney Saul Weisenberg. All right, Saul, well, late tonight, Trump's attorneys filed a response in that D.C. case that reads in part, the government seeks to restrict First Amendment rights. Worse, it does so against this administration's primary political opponent during an election season in which the administration, prominent party members, and media allies have campaigned on the indictment and proliferated its false allegations. Um, your response tonight to that? I haven't seen that filing yet, uh, but I think that uh, former President Trump's attorneys are going to have a, a lot more success and get a lot fairer hearing uh, from the federal court in the Southern District of Florida than they've, than they've gotten so far in, in D.C. Well, Saul, the issue about President Trump not being able to respond in social media, for instance, and, you know, he's always, you know, his, his comments on social media can be over the top. You know, I'm coming for you. On that particular issue, what's your take? Because there are civil libertarians out there who say, well, that's restricting First Amendment speech. And that are others are saying, well, that could be a comment about, you know, uh, other potential witnesses, or he could be sending a signal that would be tampering with the proceeding. What's your take? Well, there is an inherent conflict between the kind of gag orders and, and restrictions on the speech of defendants and defense attorneys and the normal First Amendment uh, rights th that we have. And unfortunately, the case law uh, set by the Supreme Court is, is un unclear all on this. They decided on a case-by-case -case basis. And most districts have a rule that says you can't make a statement. A defendant, uh, no party can make a statement that might impact the administration of justice. And that's very, that's very loosey-goosey. And he's going to have to be careful about what he says on uh, social media. And we're likely to see uh, some kind of a ruling very soon from uh, Judge Chutkin in D.C. And, um, and so um, stand by, because she accelerated the response time. You know, normally Trump's attorneys would have had a lot more time, and they didn't have it here. Well, Saul, uh, Judge Chutkin versus Judge Cannon, those are two different, you know, perspectives on uh, federal uh, law, clearly. And we're going to see, we're going to get a lesson in, you know, different approaches to judicial interpretation, are we not? Absol absolutely. It looks that way. And expect Judge uh, Cannon to be, uh, continued to be attacked by, by some of the people you showed earlier today. They're already talking about uh, oh, we're going to have to move to recuse her. But really, uh, these federal prosecutors, in most cases, including most high-profile political cases, are used to getting whatever they want from federal judges because of the way the federal system is heavily slanted in favor of the prosecution. And this judge uh, in the Southern District of Florida, Judge Cannon, is saying, wait a minute. Explain yourself. You don't automatically get to put things under seal. You haven't made a strong enough showing. Uh, and, and so she's also said, wait a minute, I want an explanation for why you're using the D.C. grand jury uh, uh, for post-indictment matters in Florida. So there are two things it's, it's, that she's interested in here. Number, number one, you brought this case in the Southern District of Florida. Uh, why are you using the D.C grand jury related to that case. Number two, once you indict a case, the law says you're not allowed to use the grand jury, uh, use a grand jury to gather evidence for trial. Now, there's a major exception to that. That exception is if the prosecutor says, well, wait, we're looking at further crimes, we might file a superseding indictment. But Judge Cannon is saying, I want a public explanation. If it's okay, if you say it's okay to use the D.C. grand jury to, to gather tell evidence, us uh, tell us why on the record. In a way, they're very different cases, but in a way, it's like uh, the judge did in the Hunter Biden case in Delaware, yeah. saying, wait, wait a minute, I want this clear on the record. So she might end up letting Jack Smith do what he wants to do, but she's going to make him articulate the reason why. It's wow. interesting that in these political cases, citizens learn about stuff that regular, I've been doing federal white collar criminal defense for 23 years, stuff that regular defendants have to put up with all the time, and citizens now see how the system really works and how it's yeah. slanted against defendants. 
All right, Saul, thank you so much. Great to see you tonight. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.